In this video, we're going to take a look at the interface of 3D Experience SolidWorks app, SolidWorks Connected. Let's dive in. So in this video, I won't go into depth into every single feature, but I wanna go over some of the main features that you may run into when using SolidWorks Connected via 3D Experience SolidWorks. So one of the main differences you'll notice if you're used to, three, or used to SolidWorks desktop already is the open icon looks a little bit different. And if you drop that down, you'll notice that it has open and open from. Open will only try to open from the platform, data that is already saved to the cloud, whereas open from will only try to open from your desktop and you can any your local hard drive and you will then be able to open it and save it to the cloud. One of the other main differences you'll notice in the top bar here is that you'll have a drop down here, which you'll be able to choose from your collaborative spaces. So this is where you'll want to choose where your data is going to be saved to. And it is essential that you choose the right one. You can always move it, but it's always a pain. So make sure that you're on the right collaborative space that you want to be saving your data to. And you actually won't be able to do anything, uh, save anything, open anything in SolidWorks Connected until you are connected to a collaborative space. So it may take a, a minute once you're first opening it for this to register and connect to the cloud but once that's connected you're good to go now the remainder of the video will be largely focused on the task pane which actually aligns with the collaborative designer for solidworks as well if you're not seeing it and you have collaborative designer for solidworks and it's theoretically installed go to add-ins and you'll see a solidworks add-in that says 3d experience make sure that's turned on once that's turned on you can click on this compass icon over here in the task bar and it will open up this session here now i'll start by going over the features in the top of the bar here first we have the compass and what this will let you do is go into your 3d compass and see your apps and you can actually open some of these right within the task pane such as collaborative tasks you can go in and see uh, all of your tasks that you have assigned to you and you can drop down and see you can get back to my session if you drop down here now you can always go back to that app and once you're in the app you can choose to refresh it go to the preferences just like you would on the platform and you can open it up directly in the platform on your browser right from this button here now once you're done you can close out of it another way that you can get all to your apps is to drop down this and choose more apps and roles now this drop down will show you your session if you go to the settings the preferences you will have another location in which you can choose your collaborative space that you're saving your data to this is another place where you can also refresh my session. So if you're worried that any of this data is out of date, if somebody you're working on a project with has made an update and it hasn't registered, just go ahead and click on the refresh button and it will refresh everything for you. Next, we have the search and this will act just as the search does in the platform. So you're able to choose a, a multi-platform. If you're a member of multi-platform, you can choose my content. And then once you search, you can actually use the 6W tags just as you would on the platform. Now jumping down into this area down here, we have a number of columns which has all sorts of different properties. You can actually reorder these by just clicking on them and dragging. And you can change what ones you're seeing by right clicking and customizing. Or you can go to the tools tab and select this graph like icon here, table like icon here and fill in the checkboxes of the ones you'd like to see. Now here we have the, as a default, we'll have the components all listed out and you can drop down the sub assemblies and sub assembly parts. All those features will show up just as the feature tree would. And then we have the status and this will show you the, the status of the data itself. So for example, if you hover over it, you'll see a description. The, this file was modified in the session and that has not yet been saved to the cloud, whereas this file has not been touched and the most recent version is on the screen now. Now there is actually in the help, there is a whole description for each one of the symbols that you may encounter. You can access this user assistance. I'll show you that in a second. But if you go down to social and collaborative, 3D Experience Open Product Development PLM Collaboration Services, 3D Experience SolidWorks for 3D Experience Connected for SolidWorks, and then My Session. And that's where you will find all of this great information here. You can just go ahead and pause the screen and take a better look at it. Now to access the user assistance from your, your platform, you can drop down the help and you can find 3D Experience User Assistance, and that will open up the user assistance itself and you can filter through all of that content. Now in the task pane, we also have the 
reservation column and that will have three different symbols the gray unlocked icon that will mean that nobody has it reserved and it is open for reservation then the green icon will be you have reserved it and nobody else can work on that data whereas the red icon means that someone else has reserved it and you can't work on that data you can hover over it to see who has reserved it without having something reserved yourself it will be read only and then you will not be able to change those saves to the platform another common thing that you may run into is your your uh, revisions so if you release something you will not be able to make any changes until a new revision is made now if you have a need to make a revision you can go down to the life cycle and you can click on new revision and you can choose to enter a new comment and what this will do is it will actually create the revision on the platform but it won't automatically replace it you'll see a plus icon in the is latest revision column and what you'll need to do is actually replace and you can come down here replace by revision and what that will do is it will allow you to choose the latest revision and select OK. Now, if you want to go backwards, you can do the same thing with that same tool. Now, other tools that you will find in the Lifecycle tab that are important for you to use are the Reserve and Unreserve. Now, this is where you'll actually carry out the function of reserving and unreserving a part when you're done with it. The, the, life's, the Maturity, you should be familiar with that if you're at all familiar with the Collaborative Industry Innovator tools it'll pop up the maturity workflow for that part and you'll be able to carry out the frozen released you can move change owners of a, a part as well as move it to a new collaborative space or organization next we have the simulation tab and this will save data needed to get into the simulation if you're using simulia based apps on the 3d experience platform uh, this may not be applicable to everyone then the view tab we have the common tools that we're used to filtering views if you're familiar with the collaborative industry innovator tools the, you will see these features a lot you'll be able to filter out how you're selecting all of your uh, structure from this structure here and then lastly we have the tools here you can see relations and this will open up right within the task pane and this is how you can find uh, your related files if you're looking for a specific drawing or uh, assembly that's related to a part or a part related to assembly next up we have replace content and what that will do is it will allow you to search your local file explorer and replace that in that assembly uh, and then you can save it up to the cloud and then we have set enterprise number if you use uh, enterprise numbers with your ERP or anything, you can then enter that enterprise item number right within the part properties. We have derived outputs, which will allow you to save off attached steps, PDFs, exact geometry for the 3D Experience platform, etc. right to your derived outputs tab when you go to the information. You can print out this file or this structure here, the data structure. You can export it to a CSV and you can choose the options of what you want to export exactly. And then you can go into the options and you can change some options for save, open, and your derived formats. And then we already mentioned this tool here, which will allow you to customize what properties show up in this column here. Now that's it for the basic interface. Hopefully this just gave you an idea of where to find things and where to get started. We'll be diving a lot further into this through other videos, but I just wanted to give you a start on how to navigate the taskbar and some of the differences you may find in 3D Experience SolidWorks.